Hello and welcome to Introduction to Anatomy and Physiology at Austin Community College. My name is Matthew Belzer. I'm going to be your instructor this semester and this is just the orientation video to kind of walk you through what's going to be happening in the course and some of the more important documents and dates and things to pay attention to. So whenever you log into Blackboard and you click on this course in your Blackboard um, Learning Management System interface, a screen that looks like this will pop up. And if you look to the left, you'll see a series of tabs, the first of which is Announcements. The Announcements page is the home page. Announcements are how I communicate with you. So on the first day of class, I'm going to send out an announcement, and you're going to get an email in your ACC email that there's been an announcement in the course. Whenever I've graded exams, or if I'm late, or I'm not able to make a study session, or a study date has changed, or something like that, I'm going to create an announcement and send an email to everybody and if you're wondering whether you got an announcement or missed it, you can always log in, go to the home page and just scroll down and look at the announcements. There are none available or up right now. Now the next tab down is tools. Now, Tools has a bunch of cool things. The two items that you're going to use most in the Tools tab are the Blackboard Collaborate Ultra. So every week on Thursday during the course of this semester, we're going to have a study session from 6 to 8 p.m. So on Thursdays from 6 to 8 p.m., we're going to have a study session. The study sessions are always going to be named based on the date. So, for example, if it was today, it'd be 7.30. And you're just going to click on those, and then when you go to Blackboard Collaborate Ultra, you'll see that, and you can click on that, and you can actually log into the session. So, another important um, aspect of my tools is my grades. My grades allows you to track your grades, and I grade very uh, quickly. I'm very expedient about that, so you can kind of always know where you are in the class. So, there's my grades. Then you have course evaluation. That won't become relevant until toward the end of the course when evaluations become available and I'll offer a little bit of extra credit for doing the evaluations. Now you have syllabus and schedule. By far the most important document from a day-to-day -day perspective in this class is the course schedule, but we're going to go over the syllabus first before going over the schedule, which is the most important document in the class because it kind of walks you through everything we're doing on a day-to-day -day basis. So when we look at the syllabus, if we kind of scroll up to the top here, we work through, my name's Matthew Belzer, I have a master's in translational physiology. The best way to communicate with me is via email. Always email me from your ACC email address and use proper email etiquette, like your name, the subject, what it is you want, and what class you're in, because I have a lot of students, so it's very hard to keep track of people who just say, gonna miss, or what's this, because I don't know. I don't know what class you're in, and I teach a lot of different classes. I have about 150 students, so that becomes very difficult. So include that information that's there, but the best way to communicate with me is via email by a long shot. The phones, I'm, I'm not even linked to my ACC phone at the moment. Now this orientation is associated with that orientation quiz. You have to get that done by the first week of class. Make sure to take a look at that. Now, course description I always think is important. If you're trying to get into an allied health or mid-level practitioner position, this is probably the correct course. Look at the requirements, particularly the time requirement and the independent study requirement. If you can't set aside 18 hours per week at least at the bare minimum, and you're not good at independently regulating your own class structure, this may not be the best choice for you. So just keep that in mind. So read through all of those things, but know that this course is going to take time. It's a four credit class, it's a science class, and it's a you know filtering tool for a lot of the clinical programs, so you have to come correct. Now skills and prerequisites I won't really take a look at unless you start falling behind. Then I'll make sure that those are definitely met. One of the um, scores I pay most attention to is the TSI score. So if I see a very low TSI score and you're struggling in the class, I may work with you to develop uh, a more effective route for you to take um, in your pursuit of your goals. Now you can look at common course objectives, course rationale, required materials. The required textbook is what's called an OpenStax textbook. You can find the link here. OpenStax is just a free, what's called open educational resource, so it's a free online textbook. If you navigate to the link provided in the syllabus, it'll take you right there, and you can download the entire textbook, and I'll give you the chapters to read, which you'll find in the schedule. 
Now, with respect to lecture, all of the lectures are going to be in the form of videos. I'm going to show you that in just a little bit. There are 16 core topics. My suggestion would be to get a three-ring binder with 16 dividers labeled by core topics because it's going to make studying easier. And I, there are also a series of modules to kind of reinforce the material we go over, particularly in Unit 1. So kind of read through this and take a look. Um, then we have testing using the Respondus Lockdown Browser. So Respondus Lockdown Browser is a browser, kind of like Google Chrome or Firefox. And when you take exams, not quizzes, lecture and lab quizzes don't require the Respondus Lockdown Browser. But when you take an exam, right, the Respondus Lockdown Browser is required. So the Respondus Lockdown Browser is a browser. And what it does is it prevents you from opening up any other programs or anything like that, right? You're going to have to have your camera accessible because it's going to ask you to um, open up your camera to make sure that there aren't any. It's essentially a test proctoring software. And you can find all the instructions for downloading the Respondus system here. Another important thing to mention is that all exams are going to be taken using the Respondus Lockdown Browser. They're going to be timed, and if you get a message indicating that a password's required, that means that you didn't try to access the uh, exam with the Respondus Lockdown Browser. That lets me know that you didn't do that, because you shouldn't get a message that says password required if you log in using the Respondus Browser and all of your other windows are closed and your camera is on. You won't get a message that says, uh, we need a password for you to access the exam. So instructional methodology, you're going to have a series of lecture videos. You're going to have a series of lab videos, lectura modules and readings. And I'm going to point that out. When you think about the grading structure, this is important. So there are going to be five unit exams worth 120 points each. Each exam is going to be broken into essentially multiple choice questions or a section that's multiple choice or what I call check the box because I put in true and false and multiple answer as well. And a short answer section. Each one's going to be worth 60 points a pop for 120 points right total. And each exam is going to be broken into two parts, meaning that when you access the exam, there are going to be two separate links. Each one of those is going to be timed independently. I essentially cover all of the material we go over on the exam, right? So all the material in a unit, both the lecture and lab material, whether there was a quiz associated with it or not, is fair game for the exam. You can see the exam format and the exam deadlines. This is the reason that the schedule is so important, and we're going to look at that. So we have lab exercises and lab quizzes. Lab quizzes will either be based on follow-along exercises we do or on essentially anatomy labs asking you about structure or dissection parts. There are 15 lecture quizzes, and then there's going to be a formal essay worth 150 points. We're going to break this into writing an outline, writing a rough draft, and then submitting your final draft so you don't take a huge ding at the end because you didn't understand the expectations. The paper assignment and everything is up on Blackboard, and we'll look at that in just a little bit. Now, attendance isn't required, but every Thursday I'm going to do a study session, and every study session is going to be associated with a chunk of extra credit, so it may be worth your time to come. Withdrawals, I don't really do that for you unless you haven't taken the first exam and I need to get you out in order to get other people in. Really, it's kind of your responsibility to look at that. You can read through the rest of the syllabus and answer any of the questions on the quiz that are related to the syllabus. The most important document for you to have in this class is the schedule. So when you look at the schedule, you get the course information, the time requirement, right? And all of my information and access to what the, the course website. And I just kind of want to point out that this class does have a website. The website has everything with the exception of the quizzes, the lecture quizzes, the lab quizzes, and the exams. But if you just want to not have to hassle of logging into like Blackboard and you just want to be able to access all the lecture and lab material because I only put it up a unit at a time, you can always come to the website and you can access everything. So this is independent of Blackboard. So our main learning management system where you're going to be logging into more is Blackboard. But I recommend, and I talk about it in this introduction video, pinning the website to your phone. So if you just added a parkway 
one day and you just feel like listening to a lecture without going through the hassle of logging into Blackboard, you can do that by just opening it up. It's kind of like an app. I have it pinned to my phone, to be perfectly honest with you. So um, that's the schedule. Now, when we're looking at the schedule, that's the class website. When we're looking at the schedule, look at the different highlights and make sure to pay attention to what's going on. So even though we don't have class on Monday or Thursday, this is just a recommended pace to follow. Because if you fall behind in a course like this, it can become very difficult to catch back up. So you'll see orientation quiz, lecture quiz one, and you'll see that the, after each week, there's a weekly wrap-up, and all material right for that week is going to be due by Sunday at midnight. So you'll see orientation quiz due by Sunday, August 30th at 11.59 p.m. Lecture 1 quiz gives you everything that's due for that week. Everything is going to be due Sunday by midnight. It's all already open. You can go on and you can look at any of it. It's all already open, but everything for each week is going to be due Sunday at midnight. So if you want to get a good rundown of what actually is due for the week, this is a good um, tool to use. Something that I want to highlight is that even if a lecturer or a lab doesn't have an associated quiz with it, like the Lab 2 Introduction to AMP Language and Body Regions, doesn't mean that I'm not going to ask about that on the exam. In fact, I split everything equally on the exam. I just provide those quizzes for you as kind of a tool to learn so you understand the depth and breadth of the content that we're going to be going over and how you're going to be formally evaluated on that content. So you have all your weekly wrap-ups and you see your lecture and your lab quizzes. So we're going to jump back here and we're going to go, okay, that's the syllabus and schedule. Schedule by far, by a long shot, is the most important document in the class because it allows you to pace the class. Now we have office hours and tutoring. Every Thursday from 6 to 8 p.m. I'm going to do a study session. Each study session, if you log in on Blackboard Collaborate, is going to be associated with extra credit. You don't have to attend, but you are more than welcome to attend, especially if you want a little bit of help getting through the class because it's kind of a tough class and I want to make sure that everybody, um, I give equal amount of time to everybody and I want people to be able to ask questions and I want to do study sessions with y'all. So we have important links in the book. So this is the textbook. It'll take you to a link to the OpenStax website. In fact, we can go to it and you can kind of look, link to OpenStax and you'll see it, anatomy and physiology, right? And you can download as a PDF, you can view online which is kind of nice. You can just do table of contents and you get your chapter readings and the schedule. So everything that's covered in the book I also cover in my lectures. I essentially open up one unit at a time because I think there's so much in this class that I want you guys just focusing on one unit at a time. The orientation quiz in this video that you're watching in your email is also going to be posted here after I get it done and you'll see this orientation quiz. That's what you have to take in that first week in order to avoid getting booted out of the class. Unit 1 material. If you look at Unit 1 Lecture Material, you have Chapter 1 Lecture Block. Now sometimes quizzes are over entire lecture blocks and sometimes quizzes are over just one lecture. So if you look at this Chapter 1 quiz, notice that it has its own um, content folder. That's what these are called. So there are essentially four little lectures or small lectures and then that quiz is over all four of these lectures and that's why I gave it its own content folder. When you look at a quiz it's going to appear like this. You're going to click on it. You don't need respondents for quizzes. Either lecture or lab quizzes and you can look through the different questions that are going to be asked. Now yeah I want to go ahead and leave. So if we go to Unit 1 Lecture Material there are also quizzes, if you look, that are associated with individual lectures. For example, the lecture over gene expression has the gene expression quiz. I give this to you in the order you should do things. So there's my lecture. There's a little um, snippet on genetic engineering lecture handout and gene expression. And then you have this gene expression quiz. One of the things I want to highlight is you should always do the lecture handouts before doing the quiz and you should have all of your lecture handouts completed before you take an exam. You should have all of your lab handouts completed before you take an exam because that's where I'm pulling the exams from. 
they're really a tool to focus your studying. So if you go to lecture handout over gene expression, you'll see follow along one, follow along two, follow along three, four, five. Those follow alongs are associated with the lecture themselves. So I'm asking you questions as we go through the lecture and I'm kind of drawing the focal point to what's important about the lecture. So just keep that in mind that those handouts are pivotal. You should never, and every single lecture I have, doesn't matter which one you're on, has an associated handout with it. So if you come up here to unit one material and you go to any lecture, literally any lecture, chapter one lecture block, video one introduction to anatomy and physiology, you have a lecture handout. That lecture handout will walk you through the lecture and it will give you an idea of the way that questions are going to come at you. Remember that when you come to study sessions, the most effective way to do that is to study before you come to the session. Make sure you're completing your handouts on time. The schedule is just a recommended schedule, right? And then every Thursday, this is going to kind of be our study session, and we're going to talk about what we're going over. But if you haven't studied any of that material prior to a study session, study sessions aren't really useful unless you've studied. And it's going to be one of those courses where you go, oh, wow, okay, the expectations may be a little bit more than the courses I've taken in the past. So... There you go with that Unit 1 material. You also have Unit 1 lab material. Now, some of the labs are just videos, kind of like the lectures. Some of the labs are follow-alongs, and some of the labs are what are called pure anatomy. So in the pH lab, for example, you look at this and you go, pH lab, PDF. This is a video, and what you're going to be doing is treating me like your lab partner, and you're going to be collecting those data points, and then after you collect those data points and you answer those questions, will you go to this PH lab quiz? So uh, again, look at the recommended timeline of completion and the due dates for those. I make those... Uh, I essentially establish a schedule for you so you know how much material we're going over because you're going to be a little bit overwhelmed. Um, that's just the nature of anatomy and physiology. So uh, if you have questions about that, you can ask them. So we have unit exams, study guides. Study guide for unit exam one, both the lecture and lab portion of it is up. One of the things you're going to see is that for the lab portion, Right, I'm essentially, I've made videos of all the lab models that you'd need to know, and I kind of break the labs down like this. So if it's an anatomy lab, you can go over the structures that you need to know um, based on the videos that are presented, because some of the labs are just pure anatomy. They're just things that you need to know. So you have your study guides, practice exam. We're all going to take a practice exam prior to the first exam, and I'll talk about that uh, at a later time point so everybody knows how to use the Respondus Lockdown Browser. Any troubleshooting should come when we do our practice exam. It shouldn't come the day after the exam when you go, well, I logged in at 1130 and I couldn't get on. Well, that's what we had to figure out during the practice exam. All the study sessions will be graded, and then the paper assignment you can look at early, but don't be too hot in the biscuit to get going with this. I take writing very, very seriously, and the topic choices and instructions and the part one, two, and three, right, only part one is up, and I would wait until you get into the content of the course a little bit to decide what you're going to write your paper on, because you're going to find if you just submit a crappy paper to me without doing a, an outline and a rough draft and following the process we're going through that I am going to rip it to shreds, and I'm going to give you like a two out of 100, because I've been known to give like two percents out of 100 on shoddy work. But with that said, I'm a very nice guy. I'm approachable, and I look forward to having a nice semester. Do that um, online quiz. I'd have the schedule and the syllabus out uh, before you do it. And thank you very much. Have a good day. Bye-bye.